the Planning Commission considered this application and recommended approval of the request subject to two conditions, uh, those being that the um, property owner install a six foot tall wooden fence along the rear side property lines adjacent to residential uh, residential zone properties, and also if any uh, chain link fence is used on the front of the property, that it must be black vinyl coated. The uh, city staff recommended denial of this application because of its proximity to uh, a residential district and a historic residential uh, district, in fact. Um, Based on our concern that the uses allowed in M2 are, uh, most of the uses that are allowed in M2 are not appropriate adjacent to residential properties. Um, I want to point out to you that um, the, in Georgia you are allowed uh, conditional uh, zoning, so you could move forward with the M2 zoning uh, with the conditions recommended by the Planning Commission, and you can also consider the uh, conditions that would limit the use of the property uh, to protect the adjacent properties. So I just wanted to bring that forward to you. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have for me. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Does any member of council have any questions of Mr. Wood or staff at this time? Thank you, sir. At this time, is there anyone present who wishes to speak for the petition for rezoning application number R17-02 as described? Yes, please step, step forward, state your name and address. My name is Kevin Sullivan, and I own the property CK Properties. Uh, I bought the property in 2005. I had, been, I had a rezone at that time, and the economy went south, so at, my, at that time I was planning on putting some office warehouses in. Um, but it didn't, it didn't happen. I have a buyer for this piece of property that's got to be on M2. Um, uh, it's an eyesore. I mean, all the way around it, you go by and look at it. I mean, on the back side, on one side of this place of property is a budget house, and man passed away. <coughs> and you got Davis Oil Company, Devon Oil Company in front of it. And on the back side, the rental property, uh, coming along, and you know, this piece of wood there on the corner, her husband just passed away, I believe. But um, I like to have you all consideration on that one because it's bad. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Would anyone else like to speak for this petition for rezoning? Thank you. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak against this petition? or rezoning application number R-17-02 as described. Thank you. Council, we're still in a public hearing on item 6B. This is an amendment to the Period Land Development Ordinance Section 106 signs to reflect the new form based code, excuse me, to reflect the new form based code districts on General Courtney Hodges Boulevard. Mr. Wood. Mayor and Council, this request is to correct an oversight um, in which the districts in the new form based code uh, did not have reference to which sign standards apply. Uh, we are recommending, and the Planning Commission also recommended, that the Interstate Mixed Use District and the M use, uh, Mixed Use Center District um, be uh, categorized similarly to the C1, C2, M1, M2 district sign standards, and that the Neighborhood Mixed Use District uh, be categorized similar to the um, CP, LC, OC, IN districts currently in the ordinance and that uh, the uh, interstate mixed use and mixed use center also be allowed uh, blood pump message for the side similar to the C1, C2, and one of the two districts. And the kind of question that is there for Thank you, Mr. Wood. Does any member of council have any questions of Mr. Wood or staff at this time? 
Thank you, sir. At this time, is there anyone present who wishes to speak for this amendment to the Perry Land Development Ordinance Section 106, the signs as described? Anyone present who wishes to speak against this amendment to the Perry Land Development Ordinance, Section 106 signs <coughs> as described? Thank you. This public hearing is now closed. Item 7 is a review of minutes. Council, for your consideration, item 7A are the minutes. You've been provided the minutes of the March 6th, 2017 work session, the March 7th, 2017 pre council meeting, and the March 7th, 2017 council meeting. Please note that Council Member Jones was absent from the March 6th, 2017 work session. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that we approve these minutes as presented. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Are there any additions, changes, deletions, or discussion concerning these minutes at this time? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. Any abstentions? Please let the record note that Mr. Jones is abstaining because of his absence from the March 6, 2017 work session. The motion passes. I have made his old business. How to make A or ordinances for a second reading and adoption, item 881. Council, this is the second reading of an ordinance de annexing P49 41 slash 42 from the city of Perry. This property is located at 2000 and 2008 House and Lake Road. Mr. Wood. Yes, sir. <clears throat> the applicant requested the annexation uh, based on his uh, thought that the city could not pro provide. Uh, services. The, uh, we, we do not have a sewer line in the area. Uh, we, we can provide water service. The Planning Commission recommended denial of the annexation. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Does any member of council have any questions for Mr. Wood at this time? Thank you, sir. Council, this is the second reading and it is time for adoption. At this time, I will obtain a motion regarding your preference on this. Sir, can I speak? No, sir. You cannot. Uh, we've already had a public hearing on it, and it's time for us to, for, for action on it. But in lieu of Mr. Wood's statement, I'd like to add more facts. I, I understand that, sir, but we, this is not the appropriate time for it, and it's time for us to take action. Thank you. But, but Mr. Wood stated an incorrect I was told that I could not have water three separate times. It wasn't, he said that I was misunderstood. I didn't misunderstand it. I was told. I, I, I understand. But this is not the appropriate time for you to, to interject into this um, proceeding. Thank you. So, so when, when do I get to review? You, you can address Mr. Wood outside of this meeting. You can go back to planning and zoning, or you can address us at the, later on in the meeting where we have public comments. But we're going to take action at this time. Council, this is the, an ordinance for the second reading and adoption. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that tells us your preference concerning this action. I make a motion to accept the planning and zoning recommendation to deny the deannexation of this property. There's a motion. Is there a second? Yeah. Okay. And a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Madam President, you vote. Yes. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Thank you. Uh, motion carries unanimously. Item 882. Is a second reading of an ordinance that rezones uh, P49-41-42 from the City of Perry R-2A, two-family residential district, to City of Perry R-AG, residential agricultural. The property is located at 2000 and 2008 Houston Lake Road. Mr. Wood. This request uh, did go before the Planning Commission. They recommended approval of the rezoning. The RAG would uh, reduce the density allowed on the property. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Does any member of council have any questions for Mr. Wood at this time? Thank you, sir. 
Council, this is an ordinance for the second reading and it is time for adoption. At this time, I'll entertain a motion concerning your preference regarding this particular ordinance rezoning request. I make a motion to approve based on the commission. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Thank you. Okay. Um, there's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 9 is any other old business. Item 9A is any other old business from the mayor. I have none. Item 9B is any other old business from council members. Ms. Byron Grace? Mr. Jones? No, sir. Mr. Walker? No, sir. Mr. Hunt? No, sir. Mr. Jackson? No, sir. Mr. King? No, sir. Thank you. Item 9C is any other old business from the city manager, Mr. Gilmore? No, sir. Thank you. And item 9D is any other old business from the city attorney, Mr. Holbrook? No, sir. Thank you. Item 10 is new business. Item 10A is new is matters referred from the March 20th, 2017 work session and the March 21st, 2017 pre council meeting. Item 10A1, Council, this is a resolution that establishes a policy relative to the use of chain link fencing in certain land use districts. Mr. Gilmore. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council, following up on your work session and that discussion that you had at pre council, you have a resolution establishing a policy which would allow chain link fence subject to certain conditions. Um, and it would be allowed, these conditions would apply in non-residential districts except for the C3, which is downtown, and M1 and M2. Thank you, Mr. Gilmore. Does any member of council have any questions concerning uh, chain link fencing based on this recommendation? Hearing none, at this time I'll entertain a motion that we pass the resolution establishing the policy relative to chain link fencing as described. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing that all is in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 10A2. Council, this is a resolution authorizing the submission of a community development block grant application to the Georgia Department of Community Affairs for the funding of housing rehabilitation and reconstruction. Mr. Smith. Mr. Mayor. Mayor and Council, uh, you have before you this evening for your consideration a resolution establishing the intent of the City of Perry to prepare and submit a FY 2017 CDBG application uh, prior to or on the April 3rd deadline. Uh, you were called for our discussions last night. Uh, we are applying for approximately $690,000 uh, that will go towards the rehabilitation, reconstruction, and acquisition and clearance of 16 homes in Sand Hill. Uh, also included in the resolution is a commitment of the City uh, up to $25,000 to assist with the clearance of the properties to be acquired. I'd uh, be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Are there any questions of Mr. Smith and Council at this time? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Council, at this time, I'll entertain a motion that we approve this resolution that authorizes the submission of the Community Development Block Grant application as described. Second. Okay. There's a motion in the second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Item 10A3 is authorization to grant specialists of Georgia, Inc. to submit a community development block grant application to the Georgia Department of Community Affairs on behalf of the city of Perry. Mr. Smith. Mr. Mayor, Mayor and Council, uh, following up on the last agenda item, uh, what you have before you is an authorization for grant specialists of Georgia, uh, who is a consultant that we're working with in putting together our CDBG projects, to submit the application, uh, the FY 2017 application on behalf of the city. We have to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for Mr. Smith from Council at this time? Thank you, sir. Thanks. Council, at this time I want to attend a motion that we authorize the Grant Specialists of Georgia Inc. to submit the Community Development Block Grant application as described. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 10A3 is what we've already done. Item 10B are ordinances for the first reading and introduction. Item 10B1 is the first reading of an ordinance for the rezoning of property from OC, Office Commercial, to M2 Industrial. The property is located at 702 and 704 Ball Street. Council, this is the first reading and introduction, therefore no action is required by you at this time. Item 10B2 is the first reading of an ordinance that will amend the period and development ordinance section 106-signs. Again, this is the first reading and introduction, therefore, no action is required by council at this time. 
Item 10C are resolutions for consideration and adoption. Item 10C1, Council, this is a resolution that declares the official intent to reimburse costs of acquiring vehicles and equipment with tax exempt financing. Ms. King. <coughs> C2. Council, this is a resolution accepting the maintenance of certain infrastructure at Black Hawk Phase 1, Section 3. Mr. McMurray. Mayor Council, <coughs> staff has completed inspections of Black Hawk Phase 1, Section 3. We find Phase 1, Section 3 acceptable and we recommend acceptance. Thank you, Mr. McMurray, and there's, there's no structural issues or anything that you have found in your inspections? No, sir. Thank you. Does any member of council have any questions of Mr. McMurray and our staff at this time? Could you refresh our memory as to where Black Hawk actually is? Black Hawk is an <coughs> extension of Graythorn between Graythorn and Bear Branch Road to Somerset. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Council, you've heard um, the explanation at this time I will entertain a motion that we adopt the resolution accepting the maintenance of certain infrastructure at Black Hawk Phase 1, Section 3 is described. Second. There's a motion in the second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 10D is the award of bids. Item 10D1 is bid number 2017 12, St. Patrick's Drive 12 inch water main extension. Mr. McMurray. Mayor Council, uh, St. Patrick's Drive, as you know, we have uh, advertised for bids on the water main extension. Uh, we have reviewed the bids and have a recommendation of the low meter with a enterprises of $109,511. We we'll recommend moving forward with the low bid. Thank you, Mr. McMurray. Does any member of Council have any questions of Mr. McMurray and for staff at this time? Thank you, sir. Hearing none at this time, I will entertain a motion to be accepted the Department of the Engineer's recommendation to award the bid to the low bidder in the amount of $109,511 to the K Enterprises of Fort Valley, Georgia, with the caveat that if this transaction is subject to our local vendor preference policy, that that would be applied if applicable. There's a motion in the second. Or a clarification of the board for that, for that coverage. Or clarification for the audience. Uh, we have a local policy that if a local vendor is within 7% of, of a low bid, then they have the preference of, of matching that within a certain time frame and awarding to the local vendor. Uh, 
there was a question as to whether that would apply in this particular case, since this it typically is, is done with equipment and vehicle purchases. And that's why we had the caveat added to uh, this particular transaction. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Item 10D2 is bid number 2017-15 for the demolition of an old animal shelter. Chief Lynn. Thank you, Mayor and Mayor Council. Uh, earlier this year, we completed the construction of the new animal control facility. So we're at the point now that we need to raise the, the old building so we can complete the project. Uh, a request for bid was put out. Uh, the Low bidder who complied with all the, the requirements of the bid. It's level line incorporated demolition excavating services of Perry. I would recommend accepting their bid at $8,800. Thank you, Chief Lynn. Does any member of council have any questions of Chief Lynn or staff at this time? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Council, you've heard the recommendation. You have the bids before you. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that we accept the department's recommendation to award the bid in the amount of eight thousand eight hundred dollars to Level Flight Incorporated, as described. So moved. And second. There's a motion in the second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. I have ten D. Three is bid number 2017-16 for the purchase of one 4 by 4 crew cab light duty rescue truck, Chief Parker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council, if you remember, this was a uh, budgeted item. It did come in under budget. The department, therefore, recommends the bid of $103,600 be awarded to the Fouts Brothers Incorporated of Smyrna, Georgia, who were, who were the lowest bidder and met all specifications. Chief, does any member of council have any questions of chief or staff at this time? Thank you, sir. Council, you've heard the recommendation. You have the bids before you. At this time, I will entertain a motion that we accept the department's recommendation and award the bid in the amount of $103,600 to Bounce Brothers Inc. from Smyrna, Georgia, as described. So moved. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, same side. Please let the record show that Councilman Hunt um, opposes. The motion passes. Thank you. Item 10E is approval of an intergovernmental agreement between the City of Perry, House and County Board of, Ex Board of Elections, and the House and County Board of Commissioners for the operation of the 2017 municipal election, Mr. Gilmore. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor and Council. In your database, you have a copy of the Intergovernmental Agreement. Uh, we're recommending to you that you approve this. It is between the House and County Board of Elections and the City of Perry and the House and County Board of Commissioners for the operation of the 2017 Municipal Election. We do this every single time we have an election coming up. We recommend you it uh, be approved by you all, subject to clearance from the City Attorney's Office. Thank you, Mr. Gilmore. Does any member of Council have any questions concerning? of uh, Mr. Gilmore staff concerning this particular item at this time. Here we know at this time I will entertain a motion that we approve this intergovernmental agreement <coughs> subject to the city attorney's approval at this time. So moved. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 10 F. Council, you have a point you've been asked to approve a task order number 28 for the stormwater asset mapping phase two project. Mr. McMurray. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council. Uh, the city has requested a proposal from a Constantine engineer for professional services of stormwater asset mapping. Um, this is required by MS4, and we have got a proposal cost of $58,480 for Ms. McMurray, this is a requirement under the, under, under the law that we have to be in compliance by a certain date. Is that correct? Yes. yes when sir. is that date? It's December 5th, 2017. This will allow us to come into compliance, assuming the, the uh, professional services that will be rendered by Constantine Engineering are completed by that time and they have time to do it? Yes, sir. We will come into compliance with the mapping aspect of the 
from that portion. Yes. Correct. Thank you. Does any member of council have any questions of Mr. McMurray at this time? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Council, we've heard the request. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that we approve the task order number 28 for the stormwater asset mapping phase two project as described. In the amount of, the amount of $58,480 for professional services to Constantine Engineering now. Thank you. Is there a second? And a second. Any further discussion? Hearing in, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> Item 10G is the request for a septic tank and a well for 2008 Highway 127. Mr. Wood. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Uh, Mr. Ritchie, uh, the owner of the property at uh, 2008 um, Highway 127, has requested uh, a well and a septic system for the property there. Um, the city is not able to provide sewer service, so we would recommend that you allow a septic system to be uh, constructed in the city limits. This would be subject to permitting by the House of County. Uh, with regard to the well, the city uh, will provide water service to the property, um, but the applicant is requesting uh, a well there which would um, be used for both uh, irrigation of the farming aspect of the property as well as the commercial building uh, located there. He is aware of the uh, flow requirements necessary for, for fire protection on that property. Very good. Do you remember council any questions of Mr. Wood at this time? Thank you, sir. Council, you've heard the request for a septic tank and a well for 2008 Highway 127. At this time, I'm going to obtain a motion that we approve with request for the septic tank and well for 2008 Highway 127 as described. Mm -hmm. There's a motion. In the, is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 11. Mr. Gilmore, is there anything further under item 10 that we need to address at this time? No, sir. Thank you. Item 11 are council member items. Ms. Fine and Grace? No, sir. Mr. Jones? No, sir. Mr. Walker? No, sir. Mr. Hunt? No, sir. Mr. Jackson? No, sir. Mr. King? No, sir. Thank you. Mr. Gilmore? No, sir. And Mr. Holbrook? No, sir. Thank you. Item 12, the department head items. We'll start with the Department of Economic Development. Mr. Smith. Um, I do have a couple of items, Mr. Mayor, that I wanted to share. Uh, Mayor and Council, General Public. Uh, a couple of exciting items coming out of the Perry Housing Team next month. Uh, first, we are going to be having our first ever uh, City of Perry Housing Fair. Uh, the housing fair will take place on April 27th. It's a Thursday from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock p.m. And it will be at Creekwood Park Pavilion. Um, if there's inclement weather, it will be moved to the uh, Perry Arts Center. Um, we have a lot of resources coming from all over the state. Uh, if you're looking to buy a home in Perry, if you're looking to make improvements to your home, that type of thing, uh, we encourage you to attend. Um, it's welcome. Everyone's welcome. It's a free event, um, and there will be food and prizes. Uh, should be should be an excellent event. What's that date, Robert? April 27th. Thank you. From 3 to 6. And then following, a couple of days later, we are going to be having our Spring Neighborhood Cleanup Day. Uh, the Neighborhood Cleanup Day this year, or this spring, will be in Oklahachie, and we'll be meeting at Barbara Calhoun Park, which is off Tucker Road, um, at approximately 8.30 that morning. It's a Saturday morning, and uh, we'll be working our way to the neighborhoods and then following everything up. Uh, following up with that, we're going to be having a cookout, uh, hamburgers and hot dogs, that type of thing. Uh, we usually have very good attendance at these. I uh, hope it's nice weather. Um, it's always, uh, again, a good event. Oh, the date, again, April 29th, it's a Saturday, 8.30 o'clock in the morning, 8.30 a.m. in the morning. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. From the Department of Legal Services, Mr. Back. I don't know. Thank you. From the Department of Community Development, Mr. Wood. Nothing tonight, sir. Thank you. From the Police Department, Chief Lane. Nothing, sir. From the Department of Finance and Administration, Ms. King. Nothing, sir. Thank you. From the Fire and Emergency Services, Chief Parker. Nothing, sir. Thank you. Do you have anything for us from the recording secretary's position? No. <laughs> and from Public Works, Mr. Shell. Nothing tonight, sir. Thank you. Ms. Palmer. 
<laughs> Nothing tonight, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. Item 13, the general public items. Does any member of the general public wish to address council at any, on any item at this time? Is that my turn? Yes, sir. <laughs> it is your turn. <laughs> Please state your name and address. So, Richie, I live in a 208 William Beaver and Scorton, Captain Georgia. So, uh, I've come up to a kind of appeal to the uh, mayor and council for. Um, but really, I wanted to get you guys to think a little bit about um, the rezoning and re the annexation that I'd say. Um, this is just a picture of um, an aerial view of where we're putting the barn and what we're looking to do. And I, and I printed it because I wanted you to realize that, that this is not like a Dollar General that we're trying to put in. This is not what? A Dollar General? It's not a, you know, a Walmart. I'm not trying to build this big, huge commercial thing. Um, we're really, um, it started out as a barn, and we talked about it a little bit last time, and, and then we went to city council, we're planning, and said, hey, we, uh, we think we want to do a little bit more with it, um, we'd like to make some rides happy, we've got daughters we'd like to make happy, um, so, so we, you know, we went down this path of putting in the barn and using it for an event venue, um, and part of, part of the path we went down was with the help of planning and zoning, because they're like, okay, to fit in this, you have to get rezoned for that. We have to get an uh, exemption for this. And so we kind of just went down the path that we were led by, by planning and zoning. Um, it seems like um, it's gotten harder and harder. And I'm not really sure why. Um, the last meeting we were here, um, that's when they threw the parking lot um, and then later the need for a fire hydrant and, and then a road. Um, it, it's, um, I got some estimates. And it's going to cost us $20,000 to run the water to the property line. And it's going to cost me $30,000 if I put a fire hydrant in for the barn. I got um, Gary Barton to give me the cost for, of the road that they're asking for. And it's going to be between $60,000 and $80,000. Uh, as you can see, gentlemen, it, it's a barn in the middle of a field. And part of the whole setting is to have it where it looks like a farm in the middle of a field. It's not supposed to be a, you know, a developed area. We took it out of R2 in agriculture because the plan is to use it as a barn and a farm and, and do stuff and have some events out there. It's not. It, it's really gotten really expensive and really complicated. So I, I wanted to, to share with you that there are um, five barns in the Middle George area that, that do kind of the same thing. Um, none of them have a fire hydrant or paved road or packed roads that they go up to them. And I asked the fire marshal and the fire chief during our, our meeting, um, and they said, well, it's a state rule, and if the county chooses not to enforce it, then that's not on them, but, but, they, but that, that's not something they're going to choose not to enforce. So those costs are driven, are driven on us because we're in the city, not because of, of the state enforcement or anything else. So, so that's kind of what we're trying to do is, is to get, appeal to you guys and say, look, because we're in the city, you're driving the, the whole cost of the barn, and you're really kind of pushing us out of the whole idea of doing it. As, as kind of a, as a, a, a public thing. Let's make a private barn, so let a few friends and family do, do what they want in it, and, then, and that's it. it we, we can't afford these kind of costs, and, and then the maintenance and all that up on the road and everything else. So that was what I was trying to say earlier before you voted, was kind of to appeal to you and go, look, it's $2,000 a year that we're paying taxes. It would take 10 years to get back the money that, that it's going to cost just to pay for the water line to the property line, and not the 30 or the yeah, I think it's thirty thousand dollars that I have to pay, plus all the stuff for the roads. So that's what I was trying to get before y'all voted. I really want to appeal to you guys and say, hey, do you really need us in the city that bad? As you can see from the picture, it's a farm field. It's not a, it's not a parking lot. It's not a whole bunch of, of fancy stuff. And, and it was only brought into the city because the person who had it before us in two thousand six was going to put a subdivision in. And I think that both of our our hearings. The public spoke up and said they were glad they were in the barn, and they're glad we're using it for agriculture and not putting another subdivision. So I don't know how to appeal to you to be voted. I don't know how to do it to make it all fall in the rules of order. But that's what I'm here to try to do is, is get you guys really honestly think about does it mean that much to the city to have this, this 40 acres in the city, or, or can we just let it go out and let us have a little barn and do our thing? And in a couple of years, um, when the fad goes away, we can do farming and we have it. So I don't know how I do that, sir. Is there an easy way to do that? Or am I just stuck and I'm done and move on and get out of here? 
no, sir, you're never stuck and done, and there, there's always a way. And I would encourage you to meet with Mr. Wood, and he can tell you what that process is. Um, for re I'm assuming you're looking at reconsideration for, for something. Yeah, like yeah, but you see, I'm already paid. I mean, I, I wouldn't have even rezoned except they told me to come pay $800 to get rezoned. And when I got the last meeting, and you said, well, I didn't have to get rezoned. I could have got an exemption as R2, and all this would have never I mean, it, it's really kind of spiraled. And I don't know how to control it, because I'm not, I'm not that smart on rules and, and, and all that stuff. So, um, I don't know. Is, is there a way just to get a feel? Is, is it worth any trouble? Or are you guys dead set on what you're voting on, and I'm done, and, and, and go away? And what, What's the... Well, that, that's sort of a loaded question, Mr. Rich. Depending on the intent, for what we were told that you want to do requires us to act a certain way based on the current zoning codes. And then that's what we're reacting to. If, if you make a determination that it's not going to be for a public event, and it's not, you're not going to have um, in access for the public and, and all of these other things, then that's different than what, what you would ask for to begin with, from my understanding. Um, from that standpoint, that is different. That, because that's not, that would not be a public venue. Okay. So you're changing what, what it is as far as the use of, from what I'm hearing. That, that's why I was suggesting to meet with Mr. Wood because he, has, he knows the specifics of, of all of that and, and can help you. If, you. if you decide to do something different, then that's different than what we've heard and what we acted on today. I, I don't think I have a choice, sir. Like I said, I can't, I can't afford to, every time you come to a meeting get hit with another fifty thousand dollar bill. Mm -hmm. It's just I don't know you guys might get to it, but I can't. Um, I understand. So so what I heard you say is if I don't if I don't make it public, then then I can I can do, do whatever that, that road takes me down. No, but sir. you guys will not no, be sir. what you heard me say was you need to get with Mr. Wood and, and, and to tell him if you have a change in use of the property, that changes what requirements are for you to to adhere to. And I, I can't Copy speak. That. I can't speak for the council. I'm, I'm just suggesting that you get with him if you have a difference now of what you want to do on the property. I, I, I copy that. And, and then I guess is, is there a way to to poll the council members to say is there a reevaluation to get out of the city, or, or is that done? I mean that's done because no. the city is, is really the one driving the, the regulatory no. No, I'm enforcement. Not, I understand that, but it, it, it won't do any good to poll the city without us having something to vote on from, from that standpoint. It is a standard policy of the city not to be an ex property unless it's a head health or safety issue involved. Um, from that standpoint, you can still make the argument and we'll be glad to take that up again um, at, at a future day. But that is, that is a standard policy. Okay. Well, I'll ask you, is that like another $800 or is that? You have to ask Mr. Wood. <laughs> Uh, he he, yeah, he talk to him every time. He's I'll talk to you. I don't okay. know what the <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Would anyone else like to address council? Y'all can speak for me if you want. I think you ought to have a bar. <laughs> Decision, there was no yeah. more time. Is there another yeah. meeting? Is there another meeting for me to come and talk to y'all when y'all discuss it and decide, or do I need to tell you what I'm going to do with that property now? Well, the use of the property falls into certain categories based on the zoning. Correct. Right. And, and, and you, you've got latitude of the, depending on what that is. Correct. Right. What we, we were discussing were the, the, the possibilities of that and what Painting and Zoning has recommended are certain restrictions based on the projected use. Mm -hmm. To answer your question, let me back up just a little bit. The, 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 pro the process that we have for changing in zoning um, codes goes to the planning and zoning first. Right. They, they have a public hearing and then they rule and, and have a, a recommendation to Mayor Council. The recommendation comes to Mayor Council and Mr. Wood presents the recommendation, both what they have determined as well as what the staff presents. Mm -hmm. 
and then we do, we go through a similar process. In one meeting, we have a public hearing, which we receive input, and then in the next meeting, we will make a determination. Or the, the, the second reading and adoption, generally the discussion is done. Okay, so are you having another meeting between now? No, sir. Okay. We, we will not. Okay. If there's something that you wish that we don't know uh, based on what the record is, and Mr. Wood will be glad to give you all of the documentation that, that we have okay. from that, if you would get with him, and he will give us in any additional information that is pertinent to the, this particular transaction that we need to know, and we will consider that prior to us making the decision at our next meeting. Gotcha. The only reason I asked was I came to the Plan and meeting, talked to them, to the and Mr. Uh, Kevin here talked and explained what we were thinking about, and um, I left there feeling like they were recommending the rezone pending two conditions that he read, but then he also added above that things that y'all could do, which you're legally required, allowed to do. So my question was, I would like to, if you're going to talk about all those options, it doesn't seem quite right to the public for me not to be able to be there to discuss that. Do you follow me? Yes, I do. That's, that's kind of my question. Um, or at least that was my question. It's, if you're going to have another time to meet, then I would like to be a, there to be able to discuss that. Or if not, I can just tell you now kind of what I'm thinking so that y'all do know that. You, you're more than welcome to tell us now. Okay. If, if you'd like to. I'll tell you. That, 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 okay. um, basically, I'm, I own the, the property Caddy Claim, the Perry Volunteer Outreach Rents. Now, I own that property. Um, and I rent space from Hope City and Air right across the street. I run tracks and trailers, trailer business, utility trailers, enclosed trailers, and I'll send you trailers. I'm trying to purchase an additional property just like you talked about, the fence in and make it look nice for the community as a retail trailer business. Um, so I'm just trying to clean it up, cut it down, and have nice trailers out there for a reason. That's okay. all we're trying to do. Okay? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address council at this time? sometime between 10 15 and 10 45 if you'd like to go here a week from tonight at 5 30 we will have the walk with mayor and council and it will be in district two and we will meet where at legacy park at legacy park yes, the sub that subdivision and we'll be walking through that if you would uh, have an interest in seeing that particular subdivision, or more importantly, having some face time with the mayor and council, please make sure that you show up for that. Our next regularly scheduled meeting will be for a work session on April the 3rd at 5 o'clock in this room, and our next regularly scheduled pre-council and council meeting will be on April the 4th at 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock. That's all I have for today. Is there more anything further I need to look at besides that percent? If not, Council, at this time, I'm going to a motion that we go into executive session for the purposes of real estate. So a motion in the second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Thank you for your interest. 